Life Audio. As we grow in our relationship with the Lord, one of the things that is a natural symptom of that closer relationship is not just loving what God loves, but also hating what God hates. And as we are entering into this culture that really clearly hates a lot of the things that God loves, and it's it's the opposite of what the scriptures would say, it takes a lot sometimes for us to stand up and voice those things in, in a way that stands up to the injustices that we see in the world or the evil we see in the world. And so today we're going to be talking about Psalm 97 that does exactly that. It speaks about hating what God hates and loving what God loves. And that example can be a powerful way to help encourage us to do the same in the world around us. Stay tuned. Has fear stolen your peace? I'm Jennifer Slattery, lead host of the Faith Over Fear podcast, helping you fight your fears and grow your faith. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. And I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand his will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. We are continuing through our devotional content reading of the Psalms. And the reason why we're doing that is essentially because Jesus and the disciples both knew the Psalms. It was their hymn book and their prayer book. And if we are seeking to hear God's voice more clearly, to hear Jesus, I think it's also really important to think about the things that he was listening to or hearing or internalizing. And so that's why we started with the Psalms for our in-depth Bible studies. As I go through each of these Psalms, one of the things I'm doing is sometimes giving a little bit of background or culture or history or theological information just to help you understand it a little bit better. My goal is not to take the place of you reading the scriptures, but really just to supplement it. There's so many of us that are in a season where we don't have the time to sit down and study God's word for long periods of time, but we do have time to put a podcast on. And and I really truly believe that God's word does not come back null or void. And so the goal of reading God's word is, of course, to hear his voice more clearly because we know the primary way that God speaks to us is through through his word. And so what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be starting at verse one and I'm reading through the NIV. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper into these Psalms, every Monday I send out a free newsletter that has a journaling prompt for each of these Psalms. And then in addition to that, If you want the previous episodes, you can go to my website, go to shehears.org, and I have linked there. Right now we have the first 50 Psalms. Pretty soon we'll have the second set of 50 Psalms where there's a link. It's a guided journal. There's a link to the audio devotional. There's journaling space to write, the journaling prompt for the day, as well as a key verse. And again, it's just another simple way to help you process this information because as we talked about in yesterday's episode, it's not just about hearing his voice, but it's obeying his voice. So what does that look like in our lives? My goal is to help you kind of get from point A to point B with those journaling prompts. So I Again, there's lots of other resources for you there that you can take a look at that hopefully will help point you in the right direction. So starting at verse 1 of Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth be glad, let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world, the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and the people see his glory. 
All who worship images are put to shame. Those who boast in idols worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and rejoices, and the villages of Judah are glad. Because of your judgments, O Lord, for you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is shed upon the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. So as we go through Psalm 97, we see that there's a little bit of a connection to yesterday's psalm. Um, in Psalm 96, we talked about how there was an illusion or it was talking about how the Lord was coming back. And remember in the context of where we're at in this period of Israel's history is with the circumstances of the exile. Of course, there was the loss of a king and even a loss of reputation. And so one of the ways that hope is revived in that nation is by announcing that the Lord reigns and recognizing that no matter what the physical circumstances look like at the time, that there is confidence in knowing that the Lord reigns and that he will work all things out for their good, that he redeems and restores all things. And so we see that word picture throughout this psalm. For a little bit of background on this psalm, um, the Hebrew psalm does not have a title, but when it was translated into the Septuagint, which is the Greek version, there's a superscription that says, for David, when his land is established and restored. And sometimes that happened because it would have been common knowledge, especially if this was a psalm that was used throughout maybe some um, temple use within their uh, ceremony or worship services. And so sometimes in the Septuagint, because the Septuagint was written for, of course, the Greek, the Gentile audience, sometimes there would be extra information included that was either well known to the Hebrews or it was like an oral tradition. And so for maybe the Gentile you know, believers that ha were newer to understanding the Hebrew scriptures, there would be extra little notes put on there. So typically the cultural setting of this psalm is seen as an ancient king who leaves his own province and he's going to visit other provinces in his kingdom. And the way, the processional way is accompanied by um, different um kinds of royalty. And so in, in this case, in Psalm 97, it's divine royalty and divine royalty, of course, weighs higher than the royalty of, of earth. And so, um, one of the things that we read about in the Psalms and actually throughout the whole old Testament is the way that David was put on the throne by God. And as much as David was a revered king, he also pales in comparison to Yahweh as king. And so, yes, there is imagery of, a, of an earthly king and the restoration of earthly king, but that pales in comparison to Yahweh as king. So when we see verbiage like the Lord reigns, that again is talking about the, the heavenly king. And we see language of that throughout. So, um, you know, in, even starting verse one, when it says, let the earth be glad. Well, the reason why the earth is glad is because the Lord reigns. And so it says, let the distant shores rejoice. Distant shores is a poetic term that means distant foreign lands. And again, the reason why those distant foreign lands are rejoicing is because the Lord reigns. And I think that's so interesting because if you think about where they were at physically, culturally as a nation they're just coming out of this terrible circumstances of exile yet they are speaking and recognizing that the lord still reigns i think that's a powerful example for us then we move into some you know what the scholars would call it it would be said it's theophany language and essentially what that means is it's talking about God and descriptions of God. So in verse two, it says clouds and thick darkness around him. And so that's a description of the theophany. And it's basically patterned after earlier appearances of God when it's talking about like in Exodus, it talks about uh, God coming in and revealing himself. God's majesty is obscured by the clouds and thick darkness. Um, because if you remember, like even Moses, after Moses was exposed to the glory of God, his face shone for 
I can't even remember how many days it was, but if God were to completely reveal his glory, it, they, humans could not stand in the presence of a holy God. And I used to think, okay, clouds and thick darkness that represented like maybe sin or, um, that God was hidden, but really that is just this experience of God making himself known, but there's almost like a veil in between him and us of clouds and thick darkness because, his glory is so profound that there has to be something in between us because as humankind, we just can't take it. And of course, then it goes on to talk about Yahweh. Yahweh, remember, is God. God is judging the world in righteousness and in justice. And then the foundation of his throne, God's throne, is a metaphor for these fundamental principles of God's reign. And these principles are set forth, we read about them even in Psalm 89. So when it talks about in verse three, fire goes before him, sometimes fire accompanies Yahweh's appearances throughout the Old Testament because the fire of God, of course, either consumes or it refines. And you can read more about that throughout Exodus and a couple other places in the Psalms. But remember, even when the Israelites were going through the the promised land, there was a pillar of fire that, that guided them. And verse four talks about uh, lights up, sees, and trembles. And these are verbs, they're Hebrew verbs. And if we take this to be the verbs around the appearance of the Lord, um, if you if you think about, again, this future speaking kind of language, and, and the way that I would refer to that is speaking life. We've talked about this in the past where there's this concept of how um, there's there's power in our words. We can either speak life or we can speak death. Well, they're speaking life because they're looking for with certainty that, that God is going to, to reign. And so the way he's speaking, even when he's talking about these verbs in terms of maybe some of like this creation language, he's talking about it in such a sure way that he's speaking as if it's already happened. Um, and so in addition to the fire, going before him. He's talking about lightning because what does lightning do? It lights up the world. It radiates Yahweh's way. And so we're talking about this processional of Yahweh going forth and the lightning goes before him and and lights his way for him. The earth trembles at his approach. It says the mountains uh, melt like wax in verse five. And again, this is depicting this, this theophany, which theophany just means God's presence on earth. And, and they're describing it in a very physical sense with terms of creation to describe what that would look like. And it goes on to talk about that again throughout this. But in verse six, when it talks about all the people see his glory, part of the way that's happening is because of the way that God's path is being lit up with the the light of fire and the light of the of the lightning. And so that procession is lit up so that all of the world, it says all the people see his glory, God's glory and even um, there's a parallel between God's glory and his righteousness. And we see that um, in Isaiah 62, we read about that. And even in Isaiah 51, we, we learn that righteousness is an equivalent to salvation. But God's glory is seen and that righteousness is seen throughout the earth, meaning that salvation is for everybody. It's not just for the Jews, but it's also for the Gentiles. It's also for you and me. And it's also for people that haven't even been born yet. So again, this is a little bit of prophetic language speaking as if it's already happened. I think we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of a break here. And when we come back, we'll dive into the rest of the psalm. Stay tuned. Hey there, it's Nicole Eunice from the How to Study the Bible podcast, and I'd love to invite you to join us as we weekly discover a passage of God's Word together. From beginning to end, from principles to practicals, we are here to make sure that God's Word is powerful and relevant to your life. If that sounds like something you're looking for, I would love to invite you to subscribe. You can go to lifeaudio.com and search How to Study the Bible, and we'll see you there. Another aspect of the light that accompanies God's glory and his righteousness and his reign is something that I think I want to spend a little bit of time on. In in that kind of light, there also is an exposure to things that have been hidden in the darkness. And so in the view of this illumination, 
those that are worshiping false idols or are having sin in their lives, all of that stuff comes to the surface. And I think that's an important point because down in verse 10, it talks about hating the evil and loving what God loves and hating what God hates. And so it says, let those who love the Lord hate evil. And so that is a call for radical change in our personal behavior. Um, And if you think about where they were at in this part of history, Zion and all the villages of Judah were recognizing God's judgment or the law because of the season they just came out of. That whole season of exile that they were in, part of that was God's judgment because of the way that they were living, the sinful way that they were living for a very, 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 very long time. And when God handed out that judgment, he was dealing with them. And so, yes, we're back to this place where we're speaking life and we are talking about the Lord's reign and we're speaking about it with such confidence that we know it's going to happen. But the caution there is to not just ignore the reason why we had to go through judgment or discipline in the first place. They're, They're being called to a radical change in their behavior and to love what God loves and to hate what God hates. I think about that in terms of what that means in our own lives. We will sometimes go through almost like a spiritual awakening when we are going through difficult times and we lean into our relationship with the Lord in those times. And then once we've been delivered from that situation, the temptation is to go back to the way that we were living before. The temptation is to forget about all the things that, that we, you know, maybe promised God while we were begging for mercy. And that, I mean, it's a natural human thing, but I think, that that is natural because of the fallen world we live in and our sinful nature. And instead, what we see is God is calling us to live differently, to love what he loves and to hate what he, he hates. And so this passage fall, you know, ends with this call in verse 12. It says, rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous and praise his holy name. Well, this idea of righteousness, what does that mean? It means those are chasing after God at Yahweh as the most high and he is exalted not just above all other gods but above all other idols in our own lives and so this idea of righteousness is understanding that there's more required of us than just fire insurance we believe in God because we don't want to go to hell no God is calling us to a higher standard to live according to his word to according to his plan for our lives and so that's kind of this understanding of what happens when we are exposed to the light of God's glory it reveals sin. And the result of that exposure to sin is a call to obedience, a call to righteousness, a call to repentance, so that we're not just falling down that same path that led us into that judgment in the first place. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to reread Psalm 97, starting in verse one. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and the people see his glory. All who worship images are put to shame. Those who boast in idols worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and rejoices, and the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is shed upon the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. Lord God, help us to seek after you in such a way that we want the things that you want for our lives, that we love the things you love and we would hate the things that you hate. God, that as we come through seasons of discipline or judgment and we're on the other side of those, Lord, help us not to forget the reasons that led us there in the first place. Help us not to forget to turn away from the things that you are trying to weed out of our lives. Lord, I pray that as your glory shines in our lives, it would reveal the things that we need to hand over to you, that we need to ask for forgiveness for, that we need to repent from, that we need to reconcile before you. Lord, I pray that as we go throughout our days today, 
We would recognize that you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth and that you should be exalted far above all gods. And even in our own lives, what would the gods of our own lives be? Social media or our phones or our relationships or our addictions or whatever it is. God, help us to lower those things so that you can take your rightful place and that you could have the glory in our lives. Lord, I thank you and I praise you in all things. Amen. Guys, before we go, I just want to remind you, if you are feeling like you need a little bit of one-on-one, I do offer life coaching and spiritual direction. If you want to go to my website, you can find that on the work with me page if you go to shehears.org. But sometimes what happens is as you are starting to pursue more of God in your life, you're trying to hear his voice more clearly and you're trying to walk down this path. Sometimes you need a little bit of extra help. You need accountability or maybe you need some insight or maybe there's these patterns that you're starting to see in your life. One of the things that I do with people is I walk through a couple different strategies for us to help see what are the key events that have happened in your life that have an undercurrent that maybe are some barriers to you growing in your relationship with God. If that sounds like something that you need, I would love to walk through that process with you. And again, you can go to shehears.org to get more information. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. Hey there, it's Nicole Yunus, host of the How to Study the Bible podcast, where every single week we join together to encounter God through His Word. You can subscribe at lifeaudio.com.